All right, so in this part, we're going to talk about the multiple importation and how the workflow works. So in general, we have four steps. At first, um, we try to set the importation model. We think real hard about what should be our predictors for our importation model, whether we should have some main effects, auxiliary variables that are ex external to our original analysis, and maybe some um, higher order or polynomial terms that might be useful to explain some of the missingness of uh, some variable. Then um, we try to use the importation model to have the uh, predictive distribution of the covariates and from those predictive distributions we sample some values to impute and then we try to impute multiple um, data sets. That means that this is the original data set and this is the uh, multiple copies of the imputed data set where we are basically imputing some values here, some other values in here and some other values here. In general, the sample size should be the same for all of these, but it's just that when we're imputing the missing values, there are some differences in the missing values that we are imputing in each of these data sets. And then what we do is that, say for example, m equal to three here, we have three data set. So we have three incomplete data sets that are imputed. And then in each of these three data set, we do the um, analysis using the whatever standard analysis we're doing. So for example, we could do a regression analysis or we could do a correlation analysis. And after we do the regression analysis, say for example, we are estimating some beta coefficients and those beta coefficients and are then pulled or aggregated using the, using the Rubin's rules so that we can get the averaged out pooled estimate as well as the correct standard error according to the Rubin's rule. So how do we really do that in R? What we do is at first we create an initial model. So this is basically a uh, blank model where uh, we are essentially giving some starting values of the missing uh, observations. We specify the data's name, we specify the maximum iteration to zero and we set uh, print equal to false. That will not generate any data set, it will um, basically create all of the necessary objects for uh, creating the uh, final run that we are going to use later. So from this run INI we can extract the prediction matrix and from that prediction matrix we can see um, say for example age is being predicted by BMI cholesterol and uh, diastolic blood pressure. BMI is being predicted by age cholesterol and diastolic blood pressure. And diastolic blood pressure is being predicted by age BMI and cholesterol. Say for example if you think that this diastolic blood pressure is not a useful variable to impute any of these age, BMI or cholesterol variables. So in that case, what we would do is we would simply say in that predictor matrix, the diastolic uh, blood pressure column should be zero. So that will make all of these two zero instead of one in some of these, right? And then what does that mean? That means cholesterol uh, imputation model is being imputed by these two variables only age and BMI. Diastolic blood pressure is being imputed by these three variables right and then age variable is being imputed by these two variables. So as you can see you can customize this prediction matrix to determine which is going to be the model for which variable. So all of these variables have missing values that's why we are determining prediction uh, predictor matrix model, predictor matrix for uh, their input respective imputation models. Remember, this is the uh, table that we have shown earlier as well, and this is the table that was extracted from uh, the vignette uh, from the uh, mice package. And here you can see. Um, it gives you a very detailed description of how the process really works and then it gives you 
uh, this table so this is the table that we are showing you here and then not only the predictor matrix we can also specify the method uh, what are the methods by which we are going to impute all of these so by default this uh, predictive mean matching uh, method is being used for all of these continuous variables um, but we can we can make a make different choices for all of these uh, variables say for example for age we can you, we could say oh mean imputation uh, might be a, might be okay for uh, say for example cholesterol we we could say um, I can use the uh, norm predict which is for the fixed regression and for diastolic pressure I can use the stochastic regression um, so you can use any of these methods that are described here um, depending on the type of variable you are using say for example PMM norm norm of these are for the numeric variables right if you have a factor variable you could use the log reg if you have a factor variable that has more than two categories there are other uh, methods that you could use if you have a pure factor or a nominal variable you could use LDA or you could simply sample from all the other observed uh, values which is not really a very good method in most cases but that is a method that is also available all right so you can also use this quick pred function uh, to quickly figure out which is um, which of which is which are the variables that are highly associated um, and can meaningfully um, model the imputation model to give a uh, rather reasonable value of the missing observations and this can quickly say for example in here we did not make any modification and you can see uh, this diastolic blood pressure variable is not in the imputation model for BMI and the reason is that um, we we simply use the mean so other than the BMI uh, mean we do not really need anything else uh, for for cholesterol however uh, it is using all the other variables other than uh, the uh, cholesterol for diastolic blood pressure as well you can see this so for this particular example there was not much change but it is certainly a very quick way to determine um, based on the correlation and um, it, it can give you a very quick idea of what are the variables that are highly predictive of um, the other variables all right so now after the step zero where we have used the mice package to run a blank model max it equals to zero was there uh, but now we are saying that we need more iteration uh, and we also need more imputations m equal to 10 here we specify the predictor matrix based on this predictor selection we specify the methods based on the method that we have decided for each of these variables we also set a seed which is usually a very good idea if you want to get reproducible result and then of course you need to set your data set and then it will take its time to run see um, we have set iteration equals to 3 maximum iteration equal to 3 so it can go up to 3 and then we have m equal to 10 so we also have m equal to 10 for first iteration m equals to 10 for second iteration m equals to 10 for third iteration and all of these variables are being imputed and then we can extract the imputation model we can also extract the first data set based on the imputation that we have done we can also extract the data set in a long format that means it is essentially one data set all of the data sets are in here uh, and the only variable uh, dot IMP um, is going to tell you uh, from which imputation this data set or these observations are coming from so these are all coming from the first imputation and similarly if you print the whole data set you will see there are 10 uh, unique va values of this dot IMP and all of these data set from these 10 data sets are stacked together in here 
all right so remember originally we had only 30 observations and after stacking all of these 10 data set together we have 300 observations now the other way to get uh, the complete data set is in a broad format in this data uh, data set what will happen is that it will have cholesterol 1 cholesterol 2 cholesterol 3 and all that so everything will come uh, as a separate variable in here um, and you can obviously calculate the column means here to compare. Um, so in, in the next step, what we are going to do is let us just first assess what is in that imputation for. Imputation for is um, using these methods, these prediction metrics, number of imputations are 10. And then this is the first imputed data set when you have uh, extract the first list, um, not the imputed data set but this is the blank data set that we have used um, to uh, run the model and then when when we use the complete function in here on that imputation for then you can get the first imputed data set um, and you can see that um, there are no missing observations here and you can also extract uh, the 10th data set uh, using action equal to 10 and you will see there are no missing observations here but the data sets are not exactly the same just to give you one example um, what stands out here is that diastolic blood pressure has a observation of 102 right but in this first data set you see diastolic blood pressure do not have any such observation so data to data data um, some of the observations that are were missing they will have somewhat different uh, values that are imputed here and that will give you some variability all right so remember what was the imputation for imputation for was the um, object where you had all of your imputation models right and then if you simply use one model and specify this data set remember there was 10 data sets in here um, and after running this model you will see that you have this first analysis you have this second analysis on the second data set you have the third analysis all of the analysis are the same same formula is being used right but you are getting different coefficients every time so you will get it 10 times because you have used 10 different data sets right and after uh, assessing all of those you will see they have slightly different slopes so how do you really uh, summarize the result that's where we go to the step 3 where we are basically using Rubin's rule by using this pool function and you see after using them you can get estimate of the uh, intercept estimate of the age estimate of bmi estimate of diastolic blood pressure and all that and that will also include some of the um, t values and the degrees of freedoms um, and all that so in the lecture i have talked about fraction of missing information that is um, represented here f by fmi um, and that is a uh, statistic that is very similar to the um, DEFF statistics that you have seen earlier in the sample survey uh, which is the design effect and also um, you have this lambda which is basically the proportion of total variance in uh, that is attributable to the missing data so these are some of the statistics that we often use to uh, kind of get a sense of um, how much we are uh, contributing when we are doing this type of missing data analysis. In the next um, lab, I'm going to talk about variable selection and how we uh, can deal with them in the uh, multiple imputation context.